Hello class, welcome to the next video in our online video series. Uh, this is going to be about creating our navigation bar. Okay, it can look like this, it can look a little bit different than this, uh, but we are going to be creating one um, that is going to work on all of our different pages and is going to scale for your different screen sizes. So right now uh, you have an a portfolio page that most likely does not have a navigation bar on it. Uh, you have an about page that probably does not have a navigation bar on it. And you have a contact page which probably does not have a navigation bar on it. Okay? And what we need to do is we want to put a navigation bar on those, that page. Okay. Now this is how mine looks on the uh, computer screen size. Uh, we are going to create one that scales down for your responsive design modes. So on your phone, for example, uh, it will look like this with this little hamburger icon. That's what that's called, a hamburger icon. Click down on it, and you will see various pages that you can click on, and you'll go to that uh, individual page. Portfolio, contact, so on. Okay. Um, this will also be on your iPad or your tablet view. Okay down like that. Uh, you'll be able to custom change the colors, you can take out the background altogether, uh, and, and so on. You can change your fonts that you have in here, font colors, anything that you want to do to change this, uh, the styling you can. But I would like you to use this scalable um, navigation bar so that when users are on your mobile device, their mobile devices, they use a much more user-friendly uh, navigation bar than just one that is like this that is not nearly as user-friendly on the mobile device. Okay. The template that you need for your uh, navigation is embedded already in the index.html uh, template, which we were working with when we did our images. Okay. Uh, the next one is going to be in this nav.css. So just like the image home.css, we're creating another uh, Navig another CSS uh, to be used uh, for just your navigation. And this is to separate that out from the other main.css. Adding the nav in there will just add a considerable amount more clutter because there are different media queries that we're going to be using for the, to make this dynamic and just makes it a little easier to have a separate uh, CSS file. It's just as it was easier to have a separate CSS file for your image home. Okay, uh, to create the to get the template onto your computer and on your page, you just click on the link. Okay, copy the whole thing. Go to brackets, file new. We did this in the other tutorial. Paste it in, and then we're going to file save as. And we're going to put this in our styles folder called nav.css. I already have one because I've been creating this for class. And we're just going to place it. You won't need to. And now we have our CSS file. You'll notice a dis difference from the main.css and the image home.css is that this CSS does not use image home. This CSS does not have a reset style sheet. And that is because if there was a reset style sheet in this document, those reset styles would override any other styles that would come in a previous style sheet. So for example, image home, I'm um, sorry, index.html. You'll see that we have image home in one line and then nav.css in another. The reset style sheet from image home will apply to all the styles in nav.css based on how a browser reads CSS documents. They read the first one, then they read the second one, the third one, the third one, and so on and so forth. Okay? So if we had a reset style sheet in this nav.css, it would override all of these styles that we've already coded, and we don't want that to happen. Okay? So that's why there is no reset style sheet. So if you're looking for one, or you were worried about not having one, I put this little note in here uh, just to uh, let you know.
I want to look at something interesting that's going on in your index.html file. You'll see, starting at line 37, that I've added no begin phone and tablet navigation, and it's hidden at 1025 pixels. Okay, so this is hidden at a width of 1025. Okay? And this is what allows the dynamic nature of the navigation to appear on a tablet and a phone, but not on your computer screen. Okay, and you can see that this one is actually not styled with a list, uh, but actually just a variety of links um, that are coded to appear next to uh, appear in a certain way. Um, you'll see that we have our um, home, about, title, portfolio, contact, and this little uh, JavaScript line of code is your little hamburger icon that I mentioned those three horizontal lines that are next to each other. Okay. Now, in order for this to work, it requires this JavaScript code. Okay. Please do not delete it. It must be there for that. To now, because we have two separate navigations, essentially, one that's appearing on your phone and tablet, and one that's appearing on your computer screen, we have to repeat that again, the navigation again, in a separate section, and we give it a separate class. Okay. Um, now, I have forgotten to include the title tags accidentally in here. And I, so please make sure you do add your title tags for each of these. You have your home, about, portfolio, contact, and so on. Okay, add those in here. And computer nav and computer navigation. And then here we're beginning with our phone screen photos. So this is the code that you can then modify the names of these links. If you have additional links that you want to add, if you have for example, I know many of you have created like separate photography pages, separate design pages, separate uh, video pages, for example. You can add those links in here just as normal, just like this, follow this model, and then you'll do it again down here uh, using this model. Okay, two separate ways of creating lists and list of links, and that's and that's perfectly fine. This is our index page. Now looking at our nav.css. We see um, quite a bit is going on in here. And as I mentioned in your, in, in, I'm sorry, in the image home tutorial for your index page, one of the things that I'm asking you to try to do with this, with these templates is look through them on your own and try to figure out what is changing and what based on what you know so far and what you've learned so far about about coding okay so i've added notes as much as possible to help you through that process because notes are a very important part of clean coding uh, it helps me as i'm going back to this every 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 time i'm teaching this to know exactly what is happening okay so this area here um, for example, line 11, adding a background color to the phone and tablet navigation. Okay, this 333 three, three is this gray color, which we see. Where is it? Um, is this dark gray right here? Okay. Um, the link colors are white and Laura. That's what these are. Okay. Now there is a hover effect here. It does not have a work in this responsive design mode for some reason, uh, but it does work uh, outside of this responsive design mode. I tested that earlier. Uh, there. So on and so forth. Okay. Text decoration, none, auto. So all these different things, the fonts, the colors, um, they can, or the sizes, they can all be changed and you can make those, ch those changes. Uh, this is the hover effect, which I was telling you about. Um, it does work. It does change the colors. Uh, it just, for some reason, in responsive design mode, it doesn't work. So here we have, a, what's interesting here is now we've got a max width of 1024. Before we've been using minimum widths. Uh, max width means that everything up to 1024 pixels will 
have these codes, okay? Have these styles applied to them. So you notice the first one is hide the computer screen navigation bar, okay? So at the tablet and smaller, we are hiding the computer screen navigation bar by doing display none. So it's nav.computernav. And if you go to index.html, nav class computer nav. Okay, so that is telling the, in the browser to hide this code right here when you're on a, a tablet or a phone screen. All right. And then we've got some code that's uh, discussing the positioning of the icon. For example, our icon is going to be in our top right hand corner which we know that it is right over there. You could switch that so it appears on the left and you can switch the links so they appear on the right. You have the ability to do that and look through the code and try to figure that out. Now we're going to 1025 and above. So the orientation is landscape and we're gonna have laptop and larger, okay? And now we are displaying this nav.computernav as block, display block shows something that had been hidden. Um, when you hide something, display none. If you want it to appear on a particular screen, you do display block, and that will make it appear again. And this styling is what we're seeing on this right here. Now this I understand is not the most beautiful uh, navigation bar in the history of the world. I was sort of limited based on the photo that I had chosen because um, it was hard to get things to appear. But if you have a different picture, you could certainly choose to code things uh, in, in a different way. Well, you can see there's a width, there's a background color, the text is line center, the margins auto, so it's putting it in the middle. Um, this border radius is what creates the rounded borders right here. If I had my own druthers and I chose a different image, I would not have this background color. I would just have the links and a transparent background. Um, I would still apply this hover effect because I think that's that's nice for users, nice visual. Um, but that's sort of what I would, what I would do. Um, and you can see my linking here. This is uh, displaying. When you have a list and you display it in line, it makes the list appear in a line or side by side. That's why we got everything in line, not up and down. Um, you can see the padding that is necessary to give the spacing around the links. That's what gives it this boxy feel around there with that color. Um, we've got my link, visited, hover, active, like we've talked about in other tutorials. And you can see that I'm changing the background colors and the font colors and, and so on and so forth. And then what I'm doing is hiding phone and tablet navigation when on the computer screen. Okay, so please don't change um, any of that. Like I said, you can adjust all the different colors and the positioning uh, and that kind of thing. Please don't mess with certain things because they are needed. Uh, but if there are things that you want to have on your code or change colors, you know, you're more than welcome to do that. So the question becomes, um, how do we get your about page, your portfolio page, your contact page, any other page to actually display the navigation bar as if, you know, it was on your, your home page. Okay? And that is done by doing two things. First, what we need to do is we need to tell the browser to look for nav.css. So we're going to copy this code. And I'm going to go to my about page first, and I'm going to paste that in underneath, and it must be underneath the main.css. And it needs to be underneath because of the main.css has our uh, reset style sheet and nav does not. Okay, so I'm going to paste that in. And I'm actually going to do this in each one of my files. Portfolio that I have, that I have not, does not have a navigation bar. Portfolio, save that, and my contact page. I'm going to paste that into each of them. And I'm going to 
to see. Now I need to decide uh, where I want my navigation bar to go. Because you can put it above your name, you can put it below your name. I tend to like it below the name. I like the name up at the top. Of course, on the responsive, on the, on the other screen sizes, it will automatically pop up there. But um, where am I? I'm going to go to my index page, which has the code, and I'm going to copy from begin phone tablet navigation all the way through end computer navigation. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it into my about page. I'll start with that. And I'm going to put it underneath this section. You can put it wherever you would like. I want it to appear underneath my, my name. So I'm going to paste it in right here. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to upload my about page. And I don't think we've talked about uploading all your other files, but obviously you're going to need to do that uh, as well. And you'll see that I have my style sheet, and I'll upload that to my styles folder. Okay, I've already got one in there. Okay, let's refresh this. And I'm going to click on my, go to my About page. And I'm going to refresh. And voila, there is my navigation bar. Now you're going to, you might need to make some changes to this based on what's happening on that particular page. You can make some context specific changes to it if you want. Um, or not. That's perfectly fine. It's up to you. I'm going to let you you work on, work on that. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But what I'm going to do is now that I know that it's appearing, I'm going to put it on my portfolio in the same place, and save it, and on my contact page in the same place. And Save it, and then I'm going to upload my portfolio, contact, and then I'm going to look on my browser, and I'm going to go to my portfolio, and I'm going to refresh, and there's that, my contact, refresh. Okay. So some things are going to need, some styling is going to need to happen to make spacing, and, and that's perfectly uh, okay. Okay, so now we know that we have our navigation bar on each of our pages, and each of the pages are now linked together. So from my home page, I can go to my about page, to my portfolio page, to my contact page, to my about page, to my contact page, to my home page. Um, it all works uh, perfectly. Uh, which is which is wonderful. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to see if it's working through our responsive design mode to see how the responsive part of the navigation bar is working to make sure that it is in the right place and is functioning properly. So I'm going to go to my responsive design mode and I can see on my home page, very nice on my iPad, it's exactly where it needs to be. And on the phone screen, it also is exactly where it needs to be. And I can test to see if the links are actually working. So I'll do the push down there and I'll see the about page. Like, oh, look at that. It's exactly where I want it to be, but it is covering up my name. My name is actually right behind there. What does it look like on the iPad? Oop, same thing. It's positioned exactly where I want it to be, but it's covering up my name. Let me see some of the other pages if it's doing the same thing. Because if we know it's doing the same thing, then we know that it's functioning the way it's coded to function, and it's not a symptom of the individual pages. So it's not like there's a problem on the contact page or the portfolio page, and this is why this is happening. And so what I need to do is I need to go back into the code and try to figure out why it is appearing in the place that it's appearing. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my code, 
and I'm going to look at my nav CSS. And I know that my nav.topnav is what is controlling this bar. Okay. And we're going to, I can test that just to make sure by changing the color. So maybe I'll change the color to just a lighter shade of gray, just to be very quick about it. And I will upload and then come back and refresh. We see that it has changed gray. So I know for certain that nav.topnav is controlling uh, that bar. So I want to talk about the position fixed. Position fixed is like a hyperactive position absolute. Absolute is actually relative to the boxes that the thing that you want absolutely positioned is sitting inside of. Position fixed, however, is relative to the browser window. So when I am saying position fixed, I'm telling this element to consider itself out from inside of wherever it is in the code and only go exactly where I want it to go based on the browser window. And I have told it to go top zero, left zero. And as we've talked about in the past in class, which you may or may not remember, is that when we're thinking about the browser window, top left is zero, zero, top right is zero, zero, bottom left is zero, zero, and bottom right is zero, zero. So I'm telling this bar to position itself top left, top zero, left zero, which is exactly in the top left hand corner. And when it is fixed, it stays there. So even if there is scrolling, portfolio for example, it stays in its place. Now that's something that I like. <laughs> there are those cats again. There's something that I like because, you know, when I'm on a phone, I always like to make sure that the navigation is near where I am. Okay. So it's easy to find wherever I'm on that phone. And so if I'm down here on the page and I know, think I want to go somewhere else, I like to be able to click on the navigation bar and have it be able to take me to the page I'm going to, the about page, for example, or back to the portfolio page as it was. Right. So um, this is a feature that I actually like about, about the code. Uh, the problem here is then what do I do about my name? How do I get my name to appear? Now there are a couple of ways to be able to do that. Uh, the first one you could try is you could go back up to your uh, background color and I could actually make that transparent. Okay. Let's see what that would look like. Hmm. And that's totally hidden. Now I don't, however, see the hamburger uh, that I am looking for, but I do know if I click down on this uh, and the colors are all white, I didn't change any of those things that I should have changed back in the code. Um, and that's part of the process of trying to figure things out, right? So here's the A, if I change these to say, for example, black, I can have them appear like that, okay? So it's not interfering with the page, but you can see what is happening here um, as it is on the side, it's sort of covering over the text. And I really don't like that uh, at all. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this back. I'm going to put this back to white. And I'm going to make this color that dark. And I'll just make sure that works as I change it back. So let's just double check these kinds of things. Again, I'm just working in the nav.css right now. I haven't touched the other style sheets just yet. All right, so it's back to where it was before. So now that it is, I, if I'm going to have to, I think, make this my name actually move down a little bit so that there's room for the navigation bar and there's room for my name. Now, my name, if I go to portfolio.html, which I'm on, my name is controlled by the H1 tag right here. And I know that my H1 tag is in my main.css. And it's important to remember that the page I'm currently on and your portfolio page, your about page, your contact page, if you're setting these up like I'm suggesting, will be controlled by both the navigation and the main.css. And there will be times when you're going to have to imagine and think about 
how these two documents are working in concert together to control the styling of your page. So I'm going to go to main.css and I'm going to find my H1 tag, which in my phone screen is right here, margin H1. And so, whoops, so I have a font size set and I have a margin bottom set. What I need to do is I have to set a margin top to push my name down a little bit. And from trial and error while I was preparing this video, I learned that 50 pixels, if I remember correctly, was the right size. So I put that in, I go back to FileZilla, I'll refresh. Now this time I'm gonna take my main.css, pop it in the styles, boom, come back to my page, refresh, and boom, now my name has fallen, has fallen. My name has uh, popped down where I have room for the navigation bar and I have room uh, for my name. I can click on this. I can see my, my links, very exciting. Um, and then I can just close those and go on. Let's see how it looks on all different page, other pages. Contact, same. Because I'm using the style sheet that is connected with the contact, main.css, that one change works perfectly there as well. And on my about page, works perfectly here as well. Let me see it in the phone screen, because we realized that the phone was having problems before too. Ah, that works really nice also. Phone, portfolio, contact, works perfectly. Okay. Now you might be wondering why I was seeing these changes in the tablet when I just made changes to the phone screen. Okay. This will trickle down, sorry, where am I? The margin top will trickle down into the other sizes unless I make a change to it. So it will automatically apply to this H1. It will also automatically apply to this H1. Okay. So what that means is I should go and check out how it is looking on the computer screen. And if I'm happy with this extra space at the top. And I'm, to be honest, I'm really not. I think that's a little bit too high. Um, on those inner pages. Okay. So what I can do is I can come back and I can do say margin top zero. Mean that CSS back here. And now my name will appear okay here at the top of the screen, just where I want it. Uh, but on the iPhone, it's perfectly where it should be. And on the tablet, let me give the tablet a try. It is there where it should be as well. Okay. And that is how we use multiple CSS documents to affect uh, the styling on our own individual pages. Now that you have made these changes to your site, you should have a home page that has multiple images on it, uh, your name, tagline, and inner pages that have your name, navigation bar, and the content that is in those pages. And you can adjust the styling, the coloring. The navigation bar is a great place to start adding color. Many of you were worried that you weren't using the colors in your design persona. Here is a place to begin adding those colors uh, to your page. Or you could just have it be completely uh, transparent and not have any color at all. So if I took away the background color just to show you what that would look like, I have to go to my nav.css, and I need to go to the computer nav. I can do background color transparent. And it's the computer nav because we're on the computer nav page. And that actually looks very nice uh, for, for here for these inner pages. Maybe not so nice home. So I'm not happy with how the navigation bar looks on the on the home page. Uh, it looks it looks fine right here without the background color. In fact, I like it quite a bit more. But here we really need a background color. Uh, whatever that color is, we need one so that because it looks terrible without the, without the background and changing the font colors won't really work. So I can go back to my 
uh, nav.css. Um, I can't remember what the color that was, so I'm going to undo. That was this BCCC10. I'm going to create a new a new class called nav dot comp nav home. Okay, for my home page. And I'm going to take this background color. I'm going to apply it here. Because that's going to be just that for nav dot comp nav home. Okay? And I'm going to make this one transparent. Okay? Because computer nav, nav dot computer nav, I like the way that looks. Uh, generally on the other pages. And there are more of those pages, uh, so I don't have to change as many to comp nav home. Now I do, however, want all of these other styles uh, applied to my nav.comp nav home. So I can do something that looks like this. Nav.comp nav home. And all these different styles will apply to both the com computer nav and the comp nav home. Right? However, uh, because of how we have this all working, I also need to do comma nav dot com. Because of how we have this set up, where computer nav was hidden on the tablet and smaller, I will also now need to hide this comp nav home as well. So I can do the same thing, nav.comp nav home. Okay. And the only thing that is really changing from that is this background color. Uh, I'm changing the comp nav home. And because of the way style sheets work, background color will override this background color. So I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to go to my index page. And I'm going to change computer nav to comp nav home. And let's see what happens. I'm to upload my nav.css. I need to upload my index page. I'm going to refresh, and we see that this is not working completely the way that I want to. Uh, the links are all messed up. Uh, this is still working just fine, but on the home page, there's still some issues that we need to go and address. So why is that? I go back to my nav. And I see right here that I've got all these different links that are specific to nav.comp nav a, nav.comp a link, and so on and so forth. So what I need to do is I need to change those as well. To make them specific to both the nav.comp nav home this is very advanced stuff that we're doing right here. If it's a little bit over your head, but you still want to try to make these kinds of changes, perfectly fine. We can work on that together. Happy to do that with you. Uh, either in open coding or in our ten, little 10 minute meeting. Uh, it might take a little bit longer than our 10 minute meetings. Let me save that. And I'm going to upload my style sheet, nav. And there it is. It's all working. Put my about. That's all working the way I wanted to, and so on. And there we have it. We have now a complete website with uh, working pages, navigation on each of our pages, and a home page with uh, three images, depending on the, the show up based on the actual screen sizes that you want them to show up on, that tells stories about who you are, and inner pages that showcases your work and helps tell your story about who you are for whatever audience that you're hoping to advertise it to. Right? I'm really looking forward to seeing your sites in this shape. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with you to getting your sites there. And uh, have a great day. And let, as always, let me know if you have any questions. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.